Thank God it's almost Friday. We can all take a break, but I can't take a break because today I would like to relay some information about the forthcoming Record Store Day titles. But I've been uh, blessed to receive a bunch of these titles with the caveat that I must review them here for you, my devoted fans and followers. So let's get down with the get down and talk about these Record Store Day titles. I will hold each one up first, just so you'll know what I'm talking about. Youssef Latif, Atlantis Lullaby. Sun Ra at the Showcase, live in Chicago, 1976-1977. Cannibal Adderley, Burning in Bordeaux, live in France, 1969. Cannibal Adderley, Poppin' in Paris, live at the Olympia, or live at Olympia, 1972. Mal Waldron, Steve Lacey, featuring Reggie Workman and Anderson Will, live in Antwerp, The Mighty Warlords. No, the Mighty Warriors, not the Mighty Warlords. Even though it's sort of the same thing, isn't it? This Art Tatum, Jewels in the Treasure Box, the 1953 Chicago Blue Note Jazz Club recordings. Um, maybe the best of the whole bunch, I'm not sure, but definitely a terrific, revelatory album. Yusuf Latif, Atlantis Lullaby, The Concert from Avignon on Elemental Music, INA, produced by Zev Feldman, who else? Recorded live by radio producer André Francis at Clotrois de Clessons in Avignon, France, July 19, 1972. A double LP. If you can see all that. Uh, the Nitty Gritty, The Dirt. INA, digitation, digit, digititas, digitization and high resolution restoration and mastering by Quentin Joffre. Documentation by Sophie Rillon and Felix Curley. So there was digitation. I, it doesn't state whether this is from the original tapes. But I assume since in 1972 everything was a tape, they probably used some form of digital to clean these up, which is true with many of these recordings. Um, this is just an amazing concert. The sound is fantastic, and it is just a revelation. Uh, a big part of that revelation is Kenny Barron. Um, who contributes a few of the tunes. Yusuf Latif is in gorgeous fashion. This is a wonderful group with Kenny Barron, Bob Cunningham on bass, Albert Tootie Heath on drums. You know, it's some of the tunes are what we might call spiritual jazz today. Some of them are funky and really, really popping. Um, they do a couple ballads. I mean, uh, well, I'm getting sentimental over you as a standard and sort of a ballad. Um, a flute piano duet, a flower. I listened to this one a while ago, but it, it, this is an exceptional recording. If you don't have any, any Yusef Latif records, this is a great place to start. This just blew me away. His playing is just superb. The group is a real group. The audience is going apeshit. And this is just an exceptional record. Uh, a no-brainer from Elemental Music. Limited edition pressing of 2950 I would grab this in a heartbeat. I actually got two of these, and I gave one to Fred Cohen. Um, and he'll be selling them at the store. And with, with all record store day sellers, the day after, they can uh, you know, start to do mail order, and a C the CDs come out about a month later. But this was just blissful, just a great recording. It really pulls you in. It's so engaging. And Kenny Barron, again, is so on fire and expansive. And this is sort of around the time when Kenny Barron made a couple records that are impossible to find now that are almost fusion records, and those are... Uh, just impossible to find, and there's a similar spirit on this, and Kenny Barron obviously still going strong, as is Albert Tootie Heath. Great record. Now this one, I don't, you know, I came from this Sun Ra, live in Chicago, 1976-1977, at the showcase, on Zev Feldman's Jazz Detective label, Deep Digs, Elemental Music, audio remastering by Joe Lizzie, tape transfers by Michael D. Anderson from the Sun Ra Music Archive, LP mastering by Matthew Luthans. Matthew Luthans is becoming a big player in all this, um, but they probably can't get Kevin Gray. But I mean, I'm sure they can, but they don't want to wait. These are really time sensitive, and Luthans does a great job. Well, he is at Coherent Audio. So he's one of uh, he works with uh, um, all titles composed by Sun Ra, Interplanetary Concepts, except Rose Rube by Williams Hickman. So as I said, I'm coming to this from someone who doesn't know a lot about Sun Ra. And to a degree, it's sort of what I thought it would be. It's, it's garrulous. It's a party. There's call and response with the audience. There are sections where uh, the lineup, let's read the amazing lineup. 
Sun Ra, piano and electronic keyboards. Now I wonder what electronic keyboards, because at, at times it sounds like he's torturing a Farfisa organ. So you get these weird space age effects and they're usually independent from anything going on within the group. It's like his own solo sections. Anyway, John Gilmore, tenor sax, Marshall Allen, alto sax, still with us obviously, Danny Davis on alto sax, Elo Omo, alto sax, plays clarinet, Danny Thompson, baritone sax, Michael Ray, trumpet, Ahmed Abdullah on trumpet, Ahmed McDonald on trumpet, Vincent Chancy on French horn, Dave Williams on guitar, Richard Williams on bass, Lugman Ali on drums, Eddie Thomas on percussion, James Jackson, Ancient Infinity Drum, Oboe, Atakatune, Congas, June Tyson on vocals, Cheryl Banks Smith vocals, and Wisteria Judith Holton vocals. Uh, double LP set. And man, it is a party. You know, the, the sound quality is pretty good. If the, uh, if the Latif was a 9, this is probably a 7 for the sound quality. But if you're a fan of Sun Ra, I don't think sound quality is your main thing anyway. He made so many records. We've auctioned off homemade records and also the Jags Record Center. There are like this many Sun Ra records. They come and go very quickly. These are passionate fans. But this has moments that are like a regular big band kind of blowing with a lot of ferocity and intensity. There's almost the entire side of, of two different sides of just screeching, howling trumpet and solo saxophone. That's kind of kind of bizarre. And then there's on the, on the tune uh, Calling Planet Earth, The Shadow World, there's a lot of call and response. This is a party record and it's a lot of fun. And there's some occasionally beautiful melodies, incredibly engaging. The titles alone are a trip. Eba speaks in cosmic tongue. Greetings from the 21st century, where he names off, this is going to happen in 2022, in 2021. It's kind of freaky to hear him do that. Theme of the Stargazer, Space is the Place, a very well-known uh, tune from him. View from another dimension. Akon Nation, Rose Room, Moonship Journey, Velvet. And there he is. Uh, great outfit and this is a great party record if you're a fan of Sun Ra I think you you'd want to have this recorded on November 4th and 10th 1977 February 21st 1976 at at the showcase an incredibly fun record good if not great sound quality an amazing over-the-top insane beautiful performance there are parts where he's playing just the He's crippling this, what I think is a Farfisa, and it is, it's pretty space age. It's pretty freaky. It's like he's taking the whole space age bachelor pad music and the theremin and that idea from the 50s and bringing it into the present day, into the 70s, when things are still really funky and loose. And, you know, it's a time without uh, barcodes. Can you imagine? Cannibal Adderley, Burning in Bordeaux, live in France, 1969. This is one of two Cannonball Adderley releases on Elemental. And yes, they are, in my estimation, drastically different. One, I think you should definitely buy, and the other one, I think it's only for Cannonball Adderley Completus. This one, the lineup includes Adderley on alto, his brother Nat Adderley on cornet, Joe Zawinul on electric piano, Victor Gaskin on bass, and the great Roy McCurdy on drums. Roy McCurdy is just on fire on both these records. You know, Roy McCurdy, it's hard to find it if you're a drummer and you're searching for things. He's hard to find. On recordings maybe he's on the road all the time I don't know he played with a lot of heavy people um they do here we have tracks by and I forgot to mention the booklets of course these all have these all have very nice booklets with interviews with modern day musicians who would cite these musicians as influence as well as the living who played with the leaders of these recordings. And, you know, it's nice to see that. You get Chris Potter challenging music in a nice sounding, friendly environment, reflects on Cannibal Adderley. Michael Wolf talks about Joe Zawinul. And the information on this one is INA, D digitization and high resolution restoration and mastering by Jonathan Philosoph. So this is a French recording. Somehow the tape's been digitized. And Joe Zawinul plays a big part on this. They do Mercy Mercy. They cover Walk Tall, another uh, Cannonball hit from the period. Come Sunday, a standard from the day. They do Nat Adderley's Work Song, which is also sort of, sort of a hit. Uh, Manhattan Car Carnival, also known as A Day in the Life of a Fool. Blue and Boogie, Experience in E. And the opening track, Scavenger, is pretty wide open. 
Um, the sound quality on this, if if, uh, if Latif is nine and Sun Ra is seven, this is about a four. You know, part of it is the sound is a very small mono spot and it's kind of re recessed. And the drums are the loudest thing in the mix, which as a drummer, I don't hear that right away because I like drums, but it's definitely, you have to listen kind of co closely. And though they're, you know, and he, Adderley speaks a lot, introducing the tunes. He's very interactive with the audience. He sounds wonderful on this record, and everyone does. But it, some of it's kind of rote. And since it's a small mono spot, I love mono like a prestige or a blue note, but this is recessed. It's kind of a small, distant sound. You have to kind of, it's, it's not very engaging. And also the performances, they're good, but they're not great. That's just my take on it. Um, it's sort of like you would expect going to see Cannonball Adderley. You know, you get great solos from the front lines. That one all sounds great. Playing piano and electric piano. So, I don't know, I'm kind of mixed on this one. But the next one, Cannonball Adderley, Poppin' in Paris, live at Olympia in 1972, is scorching. The sound is great. Everyone is inspired. Cannonball, not Adderley. The big difference is we have Walter Booker on bass, Roy McCurdy still on drums, but this has George Duke. George Duke in 1972, we're talking prime George Duke. We're talking Zappa era George Duke. He is just on fire on this record. He really dominates the record. And I think he really inspires the other performers to where they are just burning. And there are parts on the other record that go a little avant-garde, the first one, and that's true here as well. But, and the, uh, the sound quality is a solid nine or eight and a half. Stereo spread, sounds great. And everybody is just playing their butts off. Um, the, the real wild card, and to me the inspiration for the whole thing, really is George Duke. Uh, side A is entirely Black Messiah. Side B, Autumn Leaves, Soli Tomba, Walk Tall Again. Side C, Dr. Honoris Causa, which I think was sort of a... Uh, Adam, Adam, Adderley st standard. Side D, humming, directions, mercy, 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 the scene. Now it's interesting, side D, directions. As you know, there's a Miles Davis compilation from this era called Directions, and you can really tell on this record, these guys have been listening um, to Bitches Brew, to all those latter period uh, Miles Quintet with Tony and Herbie and Wayne, because there's, there's parts on here that sound exactly like that. You can tell their heads are way into that and they're playing that kind of ferocity and looseness and really pushing. And Adderley and uh, his brother are just, they're just an incredible form. And that's true for this whole record. Recorded on October 25th, 1972 at the Olympia Theater, Paris, France, as part of the Paris Jazz Festival. Uh, and of course, there's a booklet. Let me show you the booklet. tape canisters on elemental music who are doing a lot of really great work uh, and it's just an incredibly visceral on fire interactive engaging tumultuous torrid uh, performance uh, and everyone just raises their game incredibly and this is just 69 this is just two years later really but George Duke, you know, is such a force of nature. And I don't know about you, but I love his The Or Will Prevail. And I love all his solo records on MPS. Uh, they've all they've been reissued in a box set. Those are worth hunting out. Those sound great. Um, and I'm surprised he doesn't let George sing a track. Maybe Duke didn't start singing until he was in Zappa. But there's reflections uh, by Tia Fuller, Roy McCurdy. Now, Adderley from 1983, uh, a long essay by the great Bob Blumenthal, one of the greatest writers in jazz. And um, no brainer, you know, this is a 10 of a performance, fantastic recording. Uh, and, and we're luck really, really lucky to have this. Next up, Chet Baker and Jack Sheldon, Imperfect Harmony, the Lost Album. Chet, Jack. Jack Marshall on guitar, Dave Frischberg on piano, Joe Monrig on bass, Nick Ciroli drums. Recorded in 1972 at United Audio in Tustin, California. 
on Jazz Detective, on Deep Digs, on Elemental Music. Elemental has done so much great stuff, including a, a, a string of uh, killer uh, Woody Shaw records. Let me see. Yada, yada, yada. Uh, the audio is pretty good. Um, to me, this is a really strange lineup. This is obviously something a producer put together. Let's get Chet Baker, who I've had many people tell me was at a really, really low point in his career. Maybe he had no teeth. You know, a very sort of, in my estimation, sort of shy, introverted person, an incredible talent who only got better the older he got, in my estimation, with Jack Sheldon, who, you know, did Schoolhouse Rock, I believe, and occasionally played in the Tonight Show band, and is like a hipster, and like, yeah, yeah, baby, yeah. He sounds like, most of this record, he sounds like he's trying out for the Rat Pack. He's a great cornet player, um, but I just don't think this record works. Sometimes it sounds like Chet Baker's not even there. The The backing band is fantastic, and the recording is quite good. I just, you know, it just, they're all doing standards. This can't be love, just friends, too blue, but not for me. Once I love, you fascinate me. When I fall in love, I cried for you. And Baker does the lead on one track, and Sheldon does the lead on the other. But ultimately, it sort of sounds like a rehearsal tape. I'm sorry, you know. We're, I'm going to have Zev on, and we're going to do a video, and he's not going to be happy. I just got to say what I think, folks. So maybe Zev will say, no, you're wrong. This is why you should get it. So that's that. Mal Waldron, Steve Lacey, featuring Reggie Workman and Andrew Sewell, live in Antwerp, on Elemental, The Mighty Warriors. Now, this is an absolutely lovely performance. There is so much depth here. This is really a timeless recording, a timeless performance of two real masters who maybe weren't in the forefront of the average jazz fans thinking, but man, this is an incredible record. Uh, Mal Walden left the U.S. I think in the 60s and never came back, lived in Europe, uh, married there, had a family. Um, Walden on acoustic piano, Steve Lacey on soprano sax, Reggie Workman on bass, Andrew Cyril on drums. Uh, it's uh, two LPs. Uh, the focus of this record in the liner notes is Mal Waldron and it's just a brilliant performance and you really hear and they're, they are beautifully paired uh, the liner notes by Adam Schatz makes the point how Steve Lacey had kind of a high fluttering sound as where to my way of thinking um Mal Walden is very stately and very spacious. He takes his time, to, and there's so much depth in his playing and in the rhythm section. It's one of the best records I've ever heard of Andrew Cyril, excuse me, who sounds just wonderful. And everyone takes beautiful solos, accompanied and unaccompanied, and there's just there's so much depth in this performance. Uh, the sound quality is easily a 9. The performance is a 10. Uh... Jane Bunnett on Mal Waldron and Steve Lacey, Dave Liebman, David Varelli's the uh, the great pianist. He has records on ECM. Um, VJ Ear reflecting on Mal Waldron, the Antwerp band, Evan Parker. I can't say enough about this record. You know, this is easily this, my cerebral favorite, the most revealing record of all of these, and the least expected uh, of what I expected. Uh, just a, just a wonderful. Uh, recording, wonderful performance, and you really feel like you are privy to something very, very special. The audience is roaring in approval, and this is just an amazing record. Limited edition pressing of 2132. Uh, this is 23, 2350. This is the 2132 pressing. Uh, out of all of these, I would get this, and I would get the Latif, and I would get the... Uh, the 72 Olympia performance by Cannonball Adderley. Then we have Art Tatum. I really don't know much about all about Art Tatum. He's one of the seminal early great jazz pianists who obviously influenced people like Art Tatum. I mean Oscar Peterson. Um, once again, transfer from the original tape reels. This is from 1953, Art Tatum Trio in Chicago. Released in cooperation with the Art Tatum Estate. Nearly three hours of never-before-released Art Tatum. Art Tatum is one of the guys. Without Art Tatum, you wouldn't have modern jazz.
Uh, he was just a beast of incredible technical ferocity and grace. Um, obviously a big influence on, on Bud Powell. This is a absolutely stunning package. 3LP, amazing photos. This will make a wonderful Christmas present for someone in your life. And there's lots of uh, cool memorabilia type shots here. So, uh, essays. I still have yet to receive the Sonny Rollins, which I'm extremely excited to get. But when I do, you'll be the first to know about it. Goodbye.